it's kind of crazy because I thought like with this pandemic I probably wouldn't have bought anything for my wish list but apparently that is not the case. <laughs> Saki here and welcome back to my channel. This is the channel where we talk all about luxury goods and handbags and of course the color pink because those are my obsessions so if that's your thing as well please consider subscribing to my channel. I didn't even realize I had this in. <laughs> no wonder I couldn't really hear myself. Alright, so today I thought I would do a six month update on my luxury wish list. I think I uploaded my wish list in January, so this is about six months or was it February? Anyways, I always like to do this um, like mid year just to kind of check in on, you know, where I'm at with my wish list and see what things have changed. It's crazy how much things can change like just in a couple of months. Like some things on there, I'm just like, I don't even want that anymore and other things I have actually bought so we will go through all of that today. Fun fact, whenever I'm recording these videos my cat is always sitting on my lap most of the time. Hi Sally, are you joining me for my video? Thanks baby. Yeah, you love that. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and actually start with the things that I've already bought for my wish list. Um, however, things kind of went a little bit strange for me as I did buy, I think, two things on my wish list that I actually returned. So let me talk about those first. So one of the things that I actually ended up buying for my wish list and returning was the YSL Cassandra bag. Um, you guys may have heard the story on this channel already about it, but I basically bought it because I wanted a really like cool, chic, bag, a new bag, to um, carry to our honeymoon trip in Europe this year. And so I bought this bag literally right before we left on our trip. And I, I mean, I liked it, but I think I just got caught up in like wanting a new bag and like wanting to like fit some sort of aesthetic that I really just, um, yeah, it just really wasn't me. So I ended up actually selling that bag on in a vlog sale here on this channel. And it just ended up being like not particularly my style and I don't know I also found it a little bit boxy. I feel like I should have done a little bit more research on this bag before I bought it but unfortunately there's just not a lot of information out there. So with things like that you kind of have to be you know careful and it's really just a trial and error. So yeah I ended up reselling that one. So the other bag that I'm talking about that I actually bought is the YSL Kate bag in the patent version. Um, so I had put this on my wish list because I saw a picture of it online and I fell in love with it. I really, really love patent leather and just the um, YSL Kate is so beautiful. You guys know I'm a sucker for that YSL logo. I currently have a love-hate relationship with YSL because a lot of the times this does happen with their products where it just doesn't work out for me for some reason. But I truly think that I would love that bag. So I actually ended up seeing this one on Fashion File. You guys might already know this story. I'm sorry, this is redundant, but um, I ended up buying it from Fashion File for a really, really good price. It was under $1,000, but it was still, you know, relatively expensive especially considering the condition it was in. It was really, really damaged on the inside. The outside looked pretty good. There were a couple of like scuffs and like indents here and there, but the inside was just completely black. And I actually ended up like making a whole video on this bag because I really couldn't decide whether to keep or return it. And after reading all the comments and everything, you know, you guys really convinced me to just send the bag back and really be patient for another one to pop up on the secondhand market. It just wasn't wasn't worth it to buy like such a damaged bag for still a really really high price like maybe if it was like $300, $400 it would be worth it but because it was still like around the thousand dollar mark I just felt like yeah, it wasn't a good decision, so I did end up um, just returning that one. However, it is still on my wish list, so I'm actually looking out for another one um, that is obviously in better condition. However, I did buy two things from my wish list that are kind of my major purchases for this year already, and those are going to be my two cocoa handles. Now, I think I mentioned in the wish list that I only wanted the mini cocoa handle because I had already bought like the bigger one um, from Fashion File like a year ago, and I decided to return it because I just thought that wasn't my size but obviously I was wrong. I bought both of the sizes that I wanted. 
you guys might know the story of this one already, but I basically um, found this one on Timeless Vogue on Instagram. She is a verified, like, trusted luxury consignment seller from Australia, and I saw this on her page and literally just had to have it because the um, cocoa handle and the pink python was one of those that was, like, my dream unicorn bag. So I ended up buying this one even though I really, really wanted the mini size. I just knew that something like this wasn't going to pop up all the time, and it was really really rare so I decided to go for it anyway even though it was in the small size but I don't know I just kept thinking about the mini size after that and I really 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 still wanted a um another mini Coco handle so I ended up buying this one from the 20A collection or the pre-fall collection from Chanel this year and I'm so in love with it I thought it would be a little bit too tiny especially from having like stuffed this one and played with this one and used it a little bit like this is a really really good size for a day bag and you know it can just hold like pretty much everything I would say like it's almost equivalent to a Chanel jumbo but it doesn't even look as large for some reason so yeah I was getting really really used to this size so I was kind of afraid to buy this one but actually you can stuff a lot of things in here it actually is really deceiving I think it's because of the shape I don't know um you can fit a lot in here obviously not as much as the um bigger size but it's still very very decent especially if you are the type of person who doesn't really you know carry a ton of things day to day so yeah I ended up buying this one also and I've completely fallen in love with the cocoa handle I mean it's such a great bag and for the price that it's at I mean Obviously, it's still Chanel prices, so it's still really astronomical and crazy, but um, compared to things like the small flap or the classic medium flap, this was a really, really good price, so I don't know. I kind of see the appeal of cocoa handles now. Like, one of my friends that I follow, Lindy SS, I think she has, like six or seven maybe even more cocoa handles I don't know she has a lot of cocoa handles and I never really understood until yeah now I'm really really obsessed with them too so I can totally understand her fascination with them um but yeah so these are basically the major things that I ended up checking off on my wish list all right now I'm kind of looking at my old wish list and a couple of the things on there I don't actually really want anymore so um, I think in the accessories portion I mentioned that I really wanted these like Tiffany sunglasses well I still do want those and I think like in the future I will buy them I just have realized that I'm really not good at taking care of sunglasses I mean this isn't something I just realized but I really really thought about it and I was going to purchase them but they're so expensive and I'm just not good at taking care of them yet so I ended up buying something else instead. I actually saw this at Nordstrom Rack and bought these um Ted Baker sunglasses. I haven't worn them yet. They still have the sticker on them but I thought these are really really similar because they've got like that cat eye look and it's just got some really really cool details like how it has this like rose gold bar and I really like the fact that it's pink and black and not just all black. So I decided to buy these. I think they look pretty good on me. I love them. They give me that like vintage kind of vibe. And yeah, in my opinion, they look really, really similar to those Tiffany sunglasses that I wanted. But these were, um, I think, like 60 bucks compared to like what the $500, $600 the Tiffany sunglasses were. So yeah, I thought this was a much better choice for me, at least just until I can grow up a little bit and learn how to take care of sunglasses a little bit better. So yeah, I ended up buying these instead. All right, the next couple of things were, I think... Oh yeah, the Chanel Pearl bag. Well, although I would still love to buy that bag if I just had, you know, some disposable income or something. But realistically, I don't think I really want that bag, like, enough to spend the money on it. I think it's actually pretty expensive. I think I also put it on my wish list at that time because I really, really, really wanted it for, like, a wedding bag. Because, like, the one in the white with the pearls, I thought it would be, like, so beautiful, like, to wear with my wedding dress or something. But it ended up not happening, so I kind of feel like I've moved on from that bag a little bit and then the last bag was the uh, Louis Vuitton Capucines bag so yeah I still want this bag but it's just so expensive and with the Louis Vuitton price increases I just I don't know it just keeps flying further and further and further away from my wish list and I just don't feel like that bag is necessarily worth it in my opinion I know there are a lot of people who are fans of this bag but I still don't feel like I would ever like buy this bag brand new and it's so so hard to find the one that I want pre-loved. I am looking for a very very specific pink one. 
it's like that baby pink one but it's not the one that's called magnolia um i don't even know what it's called but it's like a baby pink and it has like rose gold on it i would only ever buy it if it was pre-loved and if i found that one exactly and those are just like way too many conditions for me to actually be like actively looking for it so yeah if it pops up i might buy it but otherwise i'm not really fussed about it and it's kind of you know just in limbo with like kind of the other stuff in my wish list so I mentioned that I wanted a pair of Stuart Weitzman boots in the light color. Now that fall is approaching, I do still really, really want those. I think I would get a lot of wear out of them. However, I'm still worried because of the pandemic. I haven't really been going out anywhere and it's like, do I really want to spend a lot of money on boots that I'm really not going to wear anyway? So I actually might wait until next year to buy those. So yeah, still on my wish list, but not really a huge priority right now. The next couple things were Chanel, so I still want a Chanel brooch. I think that I might be purchasing this like before winter time because I think that it would look really really good on like you know my jackets and stuff for fall and winter so I have been eyeing a couple of those on the pre-loved market. There was actually um like a brand new one from the 20A collection that really fit the bill in terms of like what I wanted because like I said in my wishlist video I wanted the like double C seeds brooch where like one side was pearls and one side was like the um fake diamonds or whatever and yeah in the 28 collection there was one like that but I don't know it's just it's still not perfect why am I being so picky about this I'm not sure so I was eyeing that one and I still might get it because I do think that my essay said that they had it at her store but yeah I'm a little bit iffy on that I still haven't pulled the plug but I still really 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 want to buy one um before winter and then the next Chanel item that was on my wish list is actually the square mini. Yes, I still want it, but again, like the other bags that I've been mentioning, I'm not super like in a hurry to get it, and I've never been in a hurry to get this bag, so I think it's always gonna be on my wish list somewhere, especially now that I'm super obsessed with like my Coco Hansel and stuff. Like, I don't know, I'm just not like actively looking for that um, Chanel mini anymore. All right, so I do wanna actually talk about the um, Hermes bags that I want, but I'm gonna save that till the end because there are actually two bags that I've added well maybe three bags that I've added to my wish list that I kind of um, want to talk about so the first one is actually going to be another cocoa handle I know I'm obsessed so there actually is like a pinky beige in like the chevron pattern that came out this year actually in the same collection as this one and I was debating so long between the two of them and I don't know Oh, it's so bad to say, but I kind of want that one too. I know I just bought this one and I just bought this one too, but uh, I don't know. I just, there's something about that pinky beige color and I've always wanted to add a beige um, bag to my collection, but I've always felt like the beige colors that Chanel comes out with are like a little bit too dark and too yellowy, but this beige is like the perfect mixture of pink and beige. So I don't know I kind of still want it I actually did ask my essay about it and she said that it was sold out in the U.S. so I'm kind of sad about that and that's why I actually ended up going with this one it kind of made the decision a little bit easier um but I'm still looking out for it it's being sold in the secondhand market but everybody's upselling them understandably of course like I understand that they're kind of rare but yeah that just like put me off on it and that's why I haven't bought that one so if my essay like happens to text me and be like hey we have one in stock I don't know <laughs> I might be really really inclined to buy it or I might convince my mom to buy it so that I can borrow it <laughs> All right, and then the last one actually surprised me a little bit because I was browsing Fashion File and I saw this really, really cute Louis Vuitton bag. I actually think I have seen this one before. I mean, I know I have seen it before, but I kind of just like dismissed it because I thought it was a little bit too like novelty and maybe a little bit too flashy for me. But ever since I got my Prada Odette bag in the um, like heart shape, you guys know what bag I'm talking about, I'm sure, because I talk about it all the time. But um, ever since I got that bag, I have realized that heart bags can be functional. So um, Louis Vuitton has this like heart shape bag in their Wave collection. And I'm specifically thinking about the one with like the little pins on it. I think it's just super cute. It reminds me of like something that I would have had like in childhood. I think some people might think that's a bad thing but for me it's just really really nostalgic and I just think it's super super cute. So yeah I was thinking about that one so I just decided to throw it on my wish list just in case I found it at a really good price. The one on Fashion File I think is okay but I don't know Fashion File always tends to sell their bags like a little bit too pricey in my opinion. So 
yeah, I'm sticking that one on my wish list, but I'm still waiting for like a really good deal. All right, so now let's talk about Hermes because this is like the thing that I love to daydream about the most. Like I said, every time I talk about Hermes, it's something that it is like like a dream for me, but it's not something that I am like rushing to get. I feel like this is something that I want to just take my time in saving and I put a little bit of money away like every paycheck to kind of go towards this bag and I mean I have nowhere near the amount yet. But yeah, it's just fun thinking about it and it's fun, you know, every time I save a little bit more I like to think about it. So yeah, so let's talk about that. So um, the two bags that I want obviously are the Kelly and the Birkin, but I've narrowed it down a little bit more. So with the Kelly, I really want to buy it in the rose confetti color either in the 25 or the 28 size and I definitely want the like cellier cellier the one that's like really structured not the return the one where it's kind of slouchy um I just think that you know this bag is super beautiful when it's structured and I've really 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 loved it in the rose confetti color I think that that bright pink is just so beautiful and I think that I would want it in like a smaller size like the 25 or 28 because since that bag can go crossbody and on the shoulder I think having a more like manageable size makes more sense to me and now with the Birkin I definitely want a Birkin 30. I could be persuaded into getting a smaller size but I think the 30 is perfect because um it just looks like a work bag to me not that I would necessarily carry it to work or anything but it does look like a bag that you're meant to put kind of a lot of stuff in and I think that the 30 size would be perfect the 25 just looks a little bit small and the fact that you can't put it over your shoulder or like crossbody form just yeah it doesn't make sense to me in a smaller bag so yeah I think the 30 is definitely the one that I want and I also want the more structured one um I'm kind of open to leathers because I think that um you know a lot of the Birkin leathers are really beautiful and as long as it's like semi-structured I think that I would like it and for the color I really 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 want the rose sakura color so I would want like a darker pink or like a brighter pink in the Kelly and then I think the rose sakura like blush color in the Birkin would be really really beautiful so yeah that's what I've decided on I know it's still a dream right now but it's really fun to talk about and I love thinking about it so yeah that is at the end of my wish list I know it sounds kind of crazy and that I kind of buy things like here and there really randomly but I like to make these kinds of videos just to like keep myself in check a little bit and to kind of reflect on the things that I've already gotten and look towards the future as well. So yeah that's the end of my video. I hope that you enjoyed my six month update. Please let me know what is on your wish list as well and how you're doing with yours. If you like this video please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. All right thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy out there and I will see you next time. Bye!